Today I'm going to be speaking briefly on the, what I call God's law demonstrated and poured out. I'm going to be talking about the nature of God's law. Uh, it is not uh, a message that many of us haven't heard, but it's also so important that we can never overemphasize the power and the, of understanding God's love for us, both as human and especially as his children. Uh, this week, obviously, is uh, Valentine week. Wednesday will be Valentine. Uh, we will be celebrating love. And everybody will project their own meaning to love. All right? Lovers will take themselves out. People buy flowers. Uh, you know, people uh, take care of their parents. They've even gotten the kids now to celebrate Valentine's. I get gifts from my kids. Everybody, you know... It's bigger, it's bigger than just romantic love. It's about celebration of love. But the world really does not really know what love means. Most of those, uh, most of those uh, celebrations, they are really not based on the true love. And today, I'm praying that God will open our eyes, this short moment, uh, to, to have us understand what is love means to us and i'm going to uh, start by praying let's pray father we thank you because your word is quick your word is powerful your word is sharper than any two-edged sword your word can reach to the deepest part of our heart your word can bring healing your word can bring hope your word can bring life and I pray that your word will be released today with all its power, with all its strength, and with all its blessing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I'm going to quickly take us back to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, the scripture that our brother read to us powerfully. And I've said it over and over again. I'll say it again. I, I believe the most pivotal book or the most consequential book of the Bible is the book of Romans. The book of Romans explains to us what salvation really means, uh, what happened behind the scene, what led to our salvation, how, and how we should walk as believers. So Apostle Paul started, you know, he, 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 was, he, he started a conversation in chapter 4 about faith. And in chapter 4, he explained what faith means uh, using Abraham. And so he opens up here in chapter 5 with the word therefore because, you know, therefore is a continuation. Uh, when you start a sentence with therefore, obviously you have, you have what was there before, right? That means something. So he was, he, he was talking about faith and he was trying to explain why faith is important to the Christian life. And so he opens this passage here by saying therefore since we have been justified through faith. So he's been talking about the subject of faith and the subject of justification. The word justify simply means to be made right, to be considered just, to be considered right. And this is what God did for us as believers. God, this is what God did for us. He justifies us, and our justification is not because of what we did, it's not because of what we have done, but it is by faith. By faith in Christ Jesus, we have been justified. I want you to say justified through faith. So he said, therefore, we have been justified through faith. And the second, he said, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. So he's saying, not only are we justified, we have peace with God. So before Christ came, there was enmity between man and God. You know, you, know, you know, God, man wouldn't really do what God wants. God was displeased with man. So there was a sort of enmity between man and God. There was a separation. So he's saying through Jesus Christ, there, was, there is now peace with God. So we justify by faith. We have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Verse 2 says, through whom, that is through Jesus Christ, we have gained access by faith 
into this grace we now stand. Now, because we have been justified, even though we've done something wrong, we've sinned, we've, we've gone our own way. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, all have sinned and have gone his own way. Even though we've known all that, God decided to justify us because he's God by faith in Christ Jesus. Now he says, now there is peace between us now. No, I'm not angry at you anymore. Me and you, we are fine. And you now, that now leads to what is called access into grace. Grace simply means free gift. So we have access, right, into this grace where we, we stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Now, we have access, but also there is hope of a better glory. You know, in the life of a believer, there is always a better future. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says we always go from glory to glory. A believer's life is always better in the future. Even the ultimate future is eternity. Eternity is far better, far greater. Praise the name of Jesus. So it says here, we boast in the, I mean, and we boast in the hope of God's glory. And in verse 3, it says, even gets better, right? Not only so, we also glory in our sufferings. Even when things aren't going right, even when we are going through tough times, as believers, we even boast in those moments of suffering because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. So he says, for a believer who has put his faith or our faith in Christ Jesus, even suffering, you know, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory. So a believer knows that even when I'm going through a tough time, even things when are rough, even when I'm going through suffering, I can boast because I know that God is working something good on my behalf. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And verse 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame. You see, our hope is not an empty hope. You see, that hope is not empty. Because God's love has been poured into our heart through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So he's saying here that, you see, everything here is motivated by God's love. And we know that love doesn't fail. Hallelujah. Verse 6, he continues, he says, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. So trying to explain God's love now. Verse 7, Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Right? It is rare to see someone that say, You know, I'm going to die for a righteous person. Though for a good person, some might possibly dare to die. Yeah, we can see once in a while. Somebody says, you know what, this person is so righteous. This person is, have done, has done nothing good. Why are you mistreating them? And someone will say, you know what, I'm going to put myself on the line. Once in a while, you find that. But rever the reverse is the case with God. In verse 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us. So God's love is different. You see, human love, you know, is conditional. Human love has a basis. He said, no, you will never see someone to put their life on the line for someone that is unrighteous, for someone that doesn't deserve it. There is always uh, in our mind a sense that there is, someone is deserving of something before we give it to them. He said, but God's love is different. God's love, it, God demonstrates his own love for us in this why we were still sinners. I want you to notice that. Why we were still sinners. Why we didn't care for him. Why we walked in our own way. Christ died for us. And in this passage, these eight verses that we just went through briefly, that's where I got my message today. Verse 5 and verse 8. And I'm going to reverse them. Verse 8 talks about God's law, how God demonstrates his love for us, right? 
So in verse 8, God demonstrates. To demonstrate means to show, to reveal, to prove, right? To the other person so they can understand it. Now, God knows his own love, but he needed to let us know how much he loves us. He demonstrates that love, that love through Christ. So Christ is the demonstration of God's love. Uh, but if you go back to verse 5, it talks about God pouring out his love through the Holy Spirit. So God's love was demonstrated in Christ, and you know Christ first. Then the same love is poured out into us through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about God's kinds of love because most times we don't really understand this or what it is. You see, a believer is someone who has received God's love. And I found out that most times we don't understand God's love and we have not received God's love. Most times we fail to understand God's love is so different from man's love. God's love is so powerful. It's so incomprehensible. It's difficult to understand. In fact, it's so difficult to understand, it takes the power of the Holy Spirit for us to understand and be able to really trust in the love of God. Hallelujah. So a believer is someone who receives God's love. Now, I'm going to take us to a scripture that many of us we probably heard, we used to, and most likely will make sense to us. In Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 is a story of a man who, you know, who came to Jesus. The Bible says he was an expert in the law. All right? He was an expert in the law, and he came to Jesus to ask what he must do to inherit eternal life. Now, before I go into that story, I'm going to tell you this. If you read the scripture very well, you will hardly find any passage, any parable, any story that Jesus gave to us that talks about how we should love God. You will rarely find anything about that. You will find Jesus trying to tell us how much God loves us. You see, when it comes to the love of God, there is a primary direction it goes. When it comes to love between God and man, you see, God's love is towards us. It is not always us loving him. That's not the issue. The issue is not us loving God. The issue is for us to understand God's love for us. Now, Luke chapter 10, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. First of all, he's an expert in the law. He's there to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Verse 26, Jesus said, what is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. I want to submit to you that as logical as this sounds, this is really not the picture of a New Testament believer. You see, a New Testament believer is not someone that is trying to love the Lord with all their strength, love the Lord with all their mind, love the Lord with all their hearts. Because it's a very, very tough job to love God like that. Just imagine, as a part, father or as a parent, are you so much concerned about your God, your son, your daughter loving you with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. Is that your concern? Your concern is to love them so much that they understand how much they are loved. Every parent understands that the love of the children is a response to their own love. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, under the law, you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your strength, 
with Tori or so. That's a tough job. And nobody was able to do that. Just imagine you're just trying to love God. All your heart. And so many of us, that's how we live. We want to prove to God that we love him. We're trying to love him with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our might. We want him to get that message that we love him. And that's why we are frustrated. Because no matter how you try, you can't love him enough. No matter how hard you try, there's something telling you you haven't done enough. You haven't done enough. So God is, God is not going to love you because you haven't loved him. So when it comes to our relationship with God, it's not so much about us loving God. It is us understanding how much he loves us. That is what God is communicating to us. So God is not telling you, love me with all your heart, love me. No, God is telling you, I want you to understand how much I love you. You see, people who go trying to love God, they are frustrated. It's such a hard job to try to love God with all your heart. It's such a difficult job. You know, your energy. I think I once told you before, that was Peter's position. Trying to love Jesus with all his heart, with all his mind with everything he has, trying to prove to Jesus that I love you. In fact, at the time, Jesus said, you know what? I know you are all weak. Many of you here will just will disown me. Peter said, no, 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 no. I love you so much. I am going to be there for you. I'm going to be there. If, if everyone here, if they desert you, I am going to be there. Trying to prove to Jesus that he loved him. What happened to Peter? He failed miserably but there's another disciple whom jesus loved in fact we know jesus loves him because he told us over and over again that jesus loved him you know when you read the book of john you will see a phrase there it will say there's another disciple whom jesus loved now john caught a revelation that jesus loves him and you, you know you understand you, you know something he was the only person that was there when Jesus was crucified. He was the only person that was left. Every other person, they had disappeared. The disciple that caught a revelation of Jesus towards him was the only disciple standing at the most critical moment of Jesus. So it's important for us to understand, you know, we're not proving our love to God primarily as a believer we are trying to understand how much he loves us. First John, chapter 4. This is the same John that Jesus loved, that wrote to us about love. In First John, chapter 4, verse 7, he says here, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may live through him. I want you to notice verse 10. Can we read it together? One, two, go. This is love. Not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for us. He says that he got that message. Not that we love God. Not that. The real love is that he loves us. You see, if there's anything about love you need to know when it comes to God, what you need to know that he loves you. He said, not that we love God. It's irrelevant. What is most important is that God is like God loves us, Right? And he sent his son for us. First John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. See, our love can only be a response to God. You see, our love cannot be the driver of our relationship with God. What drives our relationship with God is his love for us. Don't forget, we were not even following him when, we, when he died for us, when, G, when he sent Jesus. We didn't even care about him when he, just, when he sent Jesus. Many of us were doing whatever we like. 
And once in a while, we still do that, right? But his love still stands. He's always welcoming us with an open arm. And that is why in Ephesians chapter 3, Apostle Paul, who also had a revelation of God's love, tells us this in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. He said, I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power. I want you to understand this. May have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. I mean, he's, he's praying for them earnestly. He's praying for them passionately. He said, I'm praying that you might have the power. It takes God's kind of power. It takes a supernatural power to be able to, under, to grasp. Because many of us can't. We can't grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ to us. Because it he, he goes beyond knowledge. It surpasses what human knowledge can understand. And because we don't, something is always missing. He said it's only when we grasp that that, that we can be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You see, everything that God has for us, God's fullness can only be realized in our life when we grasp how much he loves us. You see, the reason why many of us struggle, the reason why we struggle to respond to God accurately is not because we are not trying enough. You know, when we see someone that is not really serious in their work with God, not responding to God well, not serving well, you know, sometimes we say, oh, try harder. You know, what is missing is they haven't really grasped the love of the Father. Is it a child that grasps the love of the parent? You don't need to explain to them how to respond, right? They know they are loved, and they respond adequately to the Father. What is always missing, what is always missing is our lack of understanding of how much the love of God is. Jesus told us parables over parables, parable of the lost sheep. Talks about God who left 99. You know, to pursue one ship. You see, it wasn't about the ship's response, right? It wasn't about the ship who tried harder. It wasn't about the ship who was really there, who behaved itself very well. No, it was about the ship who walked away and the father left 99 and pursued the one. Talk about the parable of the lost coin, parable of the lost son, which we call the prodigal son, right? It wasn't really about the son who really worked hard to earn the father's love. It was about the father who is always loving, regardless of the situation of the children. That is what Jesus told us over and over and over again. I want to submit to you, when you see anyone not working right, when you see anyone not serving right, when you see anyone not really you know, walking around, it is not because they didn't try harder. There is something missing in their understanding of God's law. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, so that is one side between us and God. But between us and other people, the responsibility is on us to love. See, there are two ways this thing cuts. And that's really what I want, to understand. I want you to understand today. There are two ways this thing cut. You here, God here, others here. When it comes to your relationship with Father, the love is here, right? He points down to you. God is loving you. When it comes to you and other people, so that's the better now, horizontal, your responsibility is not to expect them to love you, but to love them. But more often, we reverse that. Often we reverse that. We try to love God so we can earn his love, right? In our mindset. But we expect others to love us. And that's why we are so jacked up emotionally. 
and we are disappointed because people can't really supply what only God can supply. People can't. People can't. Let's go to Romans chapter 13 and see how God describes that. Let's see how you, that is described. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 10. He said, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are sum up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. You see, a true believer has a supply of love from God. A true believer. Somebody, your supply, and you see, the supply of love from God resolves everything. And I want to tell you, it resolves everything. All human condition, physical, mental, and emotional. Most of our emotional troubles arise from lack of love. We need love. We need affection. We need to feel whole. We need to feel love. We need to feel wanted. That need. Many of us, unfortunately, even in the course of our lives, we've even suffered, you know, abuse from people or, you know, parents, friends around us that even made our situation worse. But there is nothing that the love of God cannot resolve. Cannot resolve, rather. That is why it's so important to pray Ephesians chapter 3 that we talked about. You know, to grasp the love of God. See, the love of God resolves that. Resolves all our self-esteem issue. Resolves all our hurts, bitterness, things going on in our lives. When we, when we understand by the help of the Holy Spirit how much we are loved by God. How precious we are, how saved we are to him. You see, those things get resolved. Those things get healing comes to our heart. Our broken hearts are mended. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, that allows us to be able to release that kind of love to others. So, this week, this week instead of fighting people for not doing enough for Valentine. You know how many, instead of, you know, just, you know, doing all these things, look, focus on God's love for you. And focus on how you can love others during this Valentine. You know, a believer receives his supply of love from God. And a believer dispenses such love to others around them. That's how you maintain the balance. That's how you are healthy as a believer. And that's how you live the life. Don't reverse it. Don't go through life trying to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. You will be frustrated. Go through life trying to understand how much God loves you. You will be filled with all his fullness. Praise the name of Jesus. Don't go through life trying to get love from other people you will never be enough you would i mean maybe you'll be satisfied for a season next season you are down and you will just be up and down up and down that's not the kind of life god wants for you you need love from god who is consistent always there overwhelming love never ending love and reckless love of god Praise the name of Jesus. Today, I really want to talk to some people. If you have never really experienced this love, this love is demonstrated through Jesus. That's what Jesus represents. You see, he's been mischaracterized by many people. They don't understand that. Jesus is, oh, we don't want him. We don't want to hear Jesus. What people are missing without Jesus is a lot. Jesus is the demonstration of God's love. That's it. You see, he's the 
pure demonstration of God's love. That someone says, I am going to give my life for you so that you can live. There is nothing more than that. So if you're here, you've not accepted that. You've not placed your faith in Jesus. You've not put your absolute faith in what he did on the cross of Calvary. I'd like you to do that today. I'd like all heads bow, and I'd like to give those people here the opportunity to experience the love of God this season. If you're in the congregation, you want to accept Jesus as your person, just raise up your right hand. I will, read, I will just love to pray for you. Just lift up your right hand if you're in the congregation. Thank you. God bless you. Any other person here? You want to experience that love of God? Thank you. Thank you over there. God bless you. I'm sure there are one or two people who really want to experience that love of God. You want to. You've never really felt it. You've never really understood it. You know, when you hear Jesus, you just you think of what you have to do. You think of how you have to change something. You think of how you have to act right to be able to please him. No, 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 no. It's different. You have to think of what he did for you. And you can only respond. I want you to place that hands on your chest. And I would just like you to repeat after me. You know, if you, if you raise up your hand. I want you to say, Jesus, I thank you because you died for me. I thank you that because of me, you went to the cross so that I can leave. I thank you that because of me, you laid on your life so that I can have mine. Today, I confess and I accept that you did it for me and I put my faith completely in the finished work on the cross of Calvary. I confess you are my Lord and you are my savior. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I pray, I do my final prayer. If you made that decision today, I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to continue to pray with you. I want you to please fill out the tear of portion of the bulletin. The bulletin you have, which you all should have, has a portion that you can tear up. I want you to just write your name and check the decision you made today. That will get to me. And when the offering basket comes, just put it in the offering basket so that we can continue to pray with you and strengthen you with our prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your love poured out, demonstrated first in Christ, and poured out into our hearts so that we can love others. We thank you because this is love, not that we loved you. We did not love you, but you loved us. And you gave your son Jesus for us. We thank you. We ask today again that you give us the power. Together with all the saints. To be able to grasp. How much. How high. How wide. Is your love. Help us to understand today. So that we can be filled with all your fullness. Thank you because you have answered our prayer. And I pray for the people who today made a decision to commit their life to you. I pray that you will honor that decision. Holy Spirit, you will supervise that decision. You will help them to know you the more. You will lead them to Christ into a deeper and deeper walk with him. Thank you because you have answered our prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together and give him praise.